right, this is Honors Algebra 2 Pre-Calc. We're doing uh, the last video in 1.2, which is horizontal and vertical lines. All right, so uh, I've made like a little chart for comparison so we can talk about the difference because I think uh, in our brains, horizontal and vertical can get confused. Uh, I think not so much when we think about them in English. Uh, like I think most of us know what the horizon is and we know what it means for something to stand vertically. But I think that when we think about them uh, mathematically, sometimes we get a little confused between the two, so it makes sense to compare and contrast a little. So uh, so let's talk first about what they look like, right? So a horizontal line, right? I'm gonna give you the example of a horizontal line right here, okay? And I'll give you an example of a vertical line. So there's my axes, right? Okay, so in, let's see if the blue works. In blue, I'm gonna give you a horizontal line. So this, would be an example of a horizontal line, okay? That blue line is an example of a horizontal line, right? Uh, and then in theory, if the red works, we'll find out. I'm gonna give you an example of a vertical line. So here's an example of a vertical line, okay? Um, so a vertical line goes up and down only, right? Not left and right. And a, and a horizontal line goes left and right only, uh, not up and down. Okay, so, uh, and one way to think about it is when you look across the horizon, so wait, let me, draw out my artistic skills. So look, there's the sun setting over the horizon, right? Like horizon, right? The sun sets over the horizon. Um, so horizontal lines, right? Uh, is like the horizon, right? So the sun sets over the horizon. So let's talk about what the slope is. So it's important to remember here that slope is rise over run, right? So I'm just going to make that note way over here that slope, which we usually abbreviate as M, right? Is the rise on top of the run, right? In fact, if you picture a little person like walking on the curb, you can actually picture them taking steps uh, up and down, left and right uh, to, to go up and down. So if you, if you picture a little person standing on this curve, right, what you'll notice is that as this little dude walks, there's no rise. He's all run. He's walking left and right a lot, but no rise at all. So if you put zero on top of a fraction, you get zero. If I have no pizza and I divide it by me and my wife and my son, well, we all get no pizza. If I have no pizza and I invite the entire class of 30 some people, guess what? I was nice, but we still get no pizza. So the slope of a horizontal line is zero. Why? Because there's no rise. It doesn't go up and down at all. It only goes left and right. So when you have zero on top of a number, you get nothing, right? You have no pizza and you divide it by any number of people and you get zero. All right. Uh, and let's talk about what that equation looks like. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and put some stuff on this graph right here. I'm gonna go ahead and put two dashes. So this right here is the point one comma two, and this is the point three comma two. And, and way down this way, down here is the point like negative 10,000 comma two, right? What you'll notice is that the x's change it, but the y's never do. So in this situation, the equation of this line that I drew is just going to be y is always 2. It doesn't matter what x is, y is 2 all the time. So the equation of a horizontal line is just y is some number, right? Um, and that actually makes sense if you go back to thinking about y equals mx plus b, right? Because if you think about it, uh, since the slope is 0, y equals 0x plus b is just going to give you y equals some number that is the y-intercept. See how the y-intercept here is 2 and the entire line is just y is 2. Cool, so that's what the equation looks like. Now let's look at vertical lines. So the slope of a horizontal line is zero because there's no rise. But the problem with a vertical line is there's no run. Like this is some miserable dude climbing, I can't even draw him, he's like reaching up and he's climbing and he's like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna climb forever. Climb forever. Ah, he's super mad. Okay, right, so he's like super mad because he can climb forever. So um, the problem is that he has no run. Okay, he has no run. There's no left and right. He's only up and down. He's only rising. So the issue we run into is that when you have a number on top of a zero, that's not actually a numerical value. That's called undefined. You're not allowed to divide by zero in math. So um, the slope of a vertical line is called undefined. And you can't write the word undefined in an equation. So it's not like this where, see, I could use logic to figure out the equation of a vertical line or a horizontal line rather. I can't logic that out because I can't plug in the word undefined for slope in the formula. You can't make it y equals undefined x plus b. That is totally not how this works. So we have to understand that this is a little bit of a different situation. So now let's let's look at this graph I drew originally and let's talk about, uh, let's go ahead and make this one hash mark over, right? So that would make this, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Let's say this is the point, uh, this is negative one comma six. 
right? And this is like negative one comma four. And down here is like negative one comma negative two. And way down here, if I went on forever, might be the point negative one comma negative 100,000 for all I care, right? Um, so my point is that the, the y values are changing, but the x coordinates aren't changing, right? So, so this line right here is just the equation x equals negative 1. The y value is irrelevant. Everywhere on this line, the x value will be negative 1. So the equation of vertical lines are going to be x equals some number, right? Um, and it is worth noting that there is no y-intercept um, unless x happened to be 0, in which case, so, so there's a caveat to that, right? Um, unless x equals 0, but then the graph is the y-axis. Like, so it's, the, the graph doesn't actually intersect the y-axis. If x were 0, then the graph would literally be the y-axis, the whole y-axis everywhere. So there's no y, uh, so it's not even a less. Like, if x is 0, then the whole graph is the y-axis. But if x is anything else, you'll notice that this line does not hit the y-axis. Just like over here, it's worth noting uh, that this equation had no x-intercept. Right? And you can see that if you look at this graph, this blue line has no x-intercept, unless we're talking about the equation where y is 0, and then the graph is literally the x-axis. Um, but that's kind of the gist of, of horizontal and vertical lines. They don't function the same way other lines function for the purpose of writing equations. Like You, you can kind of logic it out with a horizontal line if you use all the other skills. But for a vertical line, you really have to spot that it's x equals some number. There's no y involved at all. It's just x is 5, x is 10, x is 57.2. It's just an x equals a number. Uh, and that's kind of the idea behind horizontal and vertical lines. So what we're now going to do is we're going to walk through um, example 5 that's in your textbook. And I might throw in like a 5B because I don't always think that your book is challenging enough. And that is the nature of being me. Uh, okay, so I'm on page 16. And if we look at example 5 on page 16, uh, you're asked to write the equation. Oh, I'm sorry, you're asked to graph the equation. So and then that's we're going to do the reverse in a second. So you're going to be asked to graph the equation. Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me, in A, we're asked to graph y equals negative 2, and in B, we're asked to graph x equals negative 3, and then we're going to do a P5 that's the same concept, uh, but just different. Uh, oh, they didn't give you a P5, so I'm just going to make up a P5. Let's do x equals 4, and y equals negative 2.8 good times. Okay, so, uh, I don't know why I picked something so close to y equals negative 2, but I, so here we are. Okay, so y equals negative 2 is a horizontal line where y is literally always negative 2. So if they say y equals negative 2, it means that right here, y is negative 2. At x is 1, y is negative 2. At x is 2, y is negative 2. At x is 3, y is negative 2. And forever and always, so if it helps, you can make a string of those dots, right? Um, here we have the equation where x is always a, sorry, that is a negative 3. I just did a terrible job of copying it. So x is always a negative 3. So uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so here's where if y is 0, x is negative 3. Well, here's where y is 1 and x is negative 3, y is 2 and x is negative 3, and so on. It's going to be this vertical line right here for always and ever. Okay, uh, if you want to try a P5 without me doing it, go ahead and do so. Uh, you don't have to put these dots here. If you get how this works, you can just jump right to the spot. So I'm going to go ahead and walk through P5. So x is 4. This is where x is always a 4, right? Um, and you can put dots if you need to, but it's a vertical line where x is 4. So this is 4, 0. This is 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4, 4, 5, 4, 6, 4, 1 million, right? Like you can keep going. Y is negative 2.8, I only picked because I wanted you to see that it doesn't have to be whole numbers, okay? So 2.8 is somewhere around here, right? There's Because this is negative 2 and this is negative 3, so that's negative 2.8. So we're looking at the horizontal line right around here, okay? And again, uh, I only picked 2.8 because I wanted you to see that it doesn't have to be whole numbers. Okay, cool. We're going to do one more quick example that's not in your book, so I guess we'll call this example 6. Um, so we're going to write the equation uh, of the graph, okay? So... Um, example six, I want you, actually, we'll do the, write the equation of the line. Okay, uh, so A, uh, so through these points, okay? So uh, let's do 1 comma negative 2 and 1 comma 7, and let's do 
of negative 4 comma negative 3 and 8 comma negative 3. Okay, so uh, you probably would do the same thing that you've been doing where you find the slope first. One thing I want you to notice is that if you are heads up about this, you can spot that this is a horizontal or vertical line really quickly. Because what I want you to notice is that these have the same exact x coordinate, right? In both of these, x is a 1. Doesn't matter what y is, x is 1. So if you spot that right away, you can cheat and be like, yo, that's cool, I'm good. Uh, my answer is just x is 1, right? So it's a vertical line. If you don't spot that, you might have gone to the work to find the slope. Now, if you did that, you'd probably subtract this way because we like our y's positive for whatever reason. So 7 minus a negative 2 would be 7 plus 2 over 1 minus 1, and you'd get a 9 over 0. That's not ever the answer. That's called undefined. You can't write this in your equation. So you have to then make the mental leap to be like, oh, this is a vertical line which means it's x equals some number, I then look over here and say, oh, what number is x all the time? Oh, x is a 1, okay? Um, same thing here. You could make the heads up leap like right away and say, wait a second, I see you. These y's are the same. Both of these y's are a negative 3, right? And if you spot that, you could be like, cool, that's the answer. y equals negative 3 is the line. That's fine. Uh, so if you spot that y equals negative 3 is the answer, that's great. If you don't, you might go ahead and find the slope and you'd subtract. Now, you want, usually want your y's to be positive, but here you're not going to get that winning proposition because it's going to be 0 and 0 is neither negative or po nor positive. So negative 3 minus a negative 3 would be negative 3 plus 3 over 8 minus a negative 4 would be plus 4. So I get 0 over 12, which is 0. So once I know that, I say, oh, wait a second, that's a horizontal line. Right? So I get that that's a horizontal line, and I say, oh, look, that's got to be y equals negative 3, right? So horizontal lines are y equals a number. Now, if you didn't see that, you could have just plugged in. So let's say you don't make that mental leap, and you say, oh, y equals 0x plus b. I plug in a point, negative 3 equals 0 times negative 4 plus b. Oh, negative 3 is my b. So y equals 0x minus 3. Well, that's the same answer, right? You're, that is also a correct answer. Again, with horizontal lines, you can use that trick. You can't really use that trick with vertical lines. So um, that's kind of it for our 1.2 videos.